Hello, Bob Nagy here again, AB5N, for another equipment review. This time it's going to be an antenna analyzer, the new Comet CAA500 Mark II. Now, a lot of antenna analyzers have all of a sudden hit the market. Really nice tools. Before this, we only had the choice of the MFJ analyzers and lab grade instruments, but now we've got a lot of choices in these antenna analyzers, and I think the little Comet here is a winner, so let's take a look at its features and functions quickly. The first thing you really notice about the Comet CAA500 Mark II is the fit and finish of the unit itself. This is definitely Japanese and not Chinese. The paint job is excellent. There's the battery compartment on the back. And just the whole fit and finish, as they say, really feels nice. And that's, that's good because you're going to knock this puppy around. You're going to use it out in the field. So just looking at the case from the front, we can see all of the controls. We've got your band selector and then your fine frequency adjustment. So you're selecting bands, which we'll show you shortly, and then you're turning, tuning the frequency inside of that band range. You've got your sweep center over here, which is sort of self-explanatory, mm -hmm. AP off and bandwidth, which will show you how to use, and the graph on and off because this has that graphing capability. Again, the meter's really nice. We're used to those cross needles for SWR forward and reflected. What you're seeing here is your SWR and then your ohm. So you can see if you're right around 50 ohms, which has a nice raised bold black bar on it, and what your SOAR is at that operating frequency. We have two connectors on top as well, a N connector for 300 to 500 megahertz, and a PL259, or in this case, of course, the SQ239 female for under 300 megahertz to the bottom of the range. On the bottom here is the on and off switch. What I'm going to do for this demo is to an attach a mobile dual band antenna right to the end connector at the top over here so we can test the meter. I've had to lean it up against something pretty heavy because this with an antenna on it is pretty darn heavy. So first off we turn the power on and the LCD meter comes on. And let's take a look at how we set the LCD. First we go ahead and adjust the band to the band we're going to use. And on the top line you can see that it's marked for the lower bands and for all the way up to 450, and of course some of these are the amateur bands, but it does cover uh, all of the frequencies in between in, in other bands that are not shown on the uh, marked LCD here. Once we get up to the band we're looking for, then we're going to adjust our frequency back and forth to do a ma completely manual check of the swirl of the antenna. And you'll see that you get that standard nulling action Find the lowest SWR, and then it will show you, of course, what the frequency of resonance is, where your inductive and capacitive reactants are equal. Look at that, nice 50 ohms, right almost spot on. Once we've centered ourselves on the resonant frequency, we can then do a plot, an automatic plot, centered on that frequency. And first, we would just press the sweep center, and it sort of automatically gauges the sweep bandwidth that you want depending on the band that it's set on, the amateur band, and it will go ahead and plot out the frequency sweeping from the lowest to the highest frequency across that automatically set bandwidth. But say we want to do a manual sweep. And the reason we do that is because we might want to do several manual sweeps of a single antenna as we change the antenna's length or adjust the gamma match and look at the difference on the graph. And this is where it really gets nice on this meter. What we do then is turn the graphing on and then we would hit sweep center and adjust our frequency for the bandwidth that we want to scan over. And you'll notice that the numbers on the bottom right and left are changing up or down as I turn that frequency knob it will show the highest frequency that it's going to scan up to. The center frequency is going to stay, uh, stay the same. So say I just want to go 5 megahertz, I lock it in by pressing the AP uh, off bandwidth button, and then if I just turn the frequency button itself back and forth, it does a plot and it slowly grabs all the little data points as you scan across it like this and creates a line in the, in the first color which is red here. Once you've got your graph marked out like that, I could go ahead and adjust something on the antenna. And if I hit that AP bandwidth again, it changes the 
color of the line to the next color in the spectrum. Now it's doing a blue line, and if I had changed the antenna, it would not be the same trace on top. It would show slightly a different resonance. So you can walk it in this way, and I think there's almost uh, five colors in there. You can keep doing a manual sweep across like that, and go ahead and get your plots right on top of each other to see the effect of your adjustment of the antenna. Now the only other real function here is to set the automatic off time. The meter will shut itself off after a predetermined amount of time according to your adjustment. If you hold in the AP off bandwidth button, it'll go into the P off set mode time. And if you turn your um, band button, you can see you can change the amount of time. If you don't want it to ever go off, you can set it to zero, but you can adjust it up to nine minutes automatic turn off time to save those batteries. So you set the meter down, it just turns itself off in one or two minutes. I'm going to put two minutes on mine, and the next time you turn the power off and boot it back up, it'll automatically save that setting. And here's the battery compartment, six double A's. You can put alkalines in there, which should last for a good long time, or nickel, cad uh, nickel metal hydride rechargeables, which is what I did, but they do warn you a few times. There's a switch in there where that white tag is to either set it for nickel metal hydride charging or off for alkalines. You don't want to be charging the alkalines. It could make them leak. So in conclusion, I'd like to say that this is around the $400 price point right now, probably going to go down in time, but I've saw, seen some sales out there on them. Um, this doesn't do one thing that the MFJ analyzers do, and that is coax checking. And I know myself, I have a lot of times a, an old hunk of 9913 or something, I want to know, is this still any good? I need to know the dB loss at a particular frequency. The MFJ analyzers, the good ones, do that. And there's no easy way to do that here on this particular analyzer. Now the upside of this is it's got uh, a nice long battery life uh, compared to the MFJ, which was always going dead on me. So the six double A's in here seem to last a lot longer. It's got that really nice plotting screen, which we talked about, that's really keen. And um, its overall build is just so much better. So I'm going to give it two thumbs up. And I did want to warn you that there's a lot of reports this doesn't work well in a high RF environment. So if you're out there in a broadcast tower environment, uh, you know, next to high power transmitters, it can make it go wacky. So, but for amateur use, it shouldn't be a problem. So two thumbs up from Bob on this one, the comment. And until next time, take care. Thank <laughs> you.